Um, so we're here at Nippert Stadium. This is Cincinnati Soccer Talk, and I'm uh, finishing up player interviews with uh, Tommy Amiobi. So uh, thanks for uh, joining me today. Uh, just wanted to kind of talk to you a little bit and let the fans get to know a little more about you than just what they see on the pitch, but but who you are. Um, so we'll start with some simple questions. Um, first off, are you left or right footed? Right footed. Left's just for standing on. Yep. Okay. Not, that's pretty, pretty common. Um, and then we see you in the striker role a lot yeah, is like a number nine. Um, is that the role you're most comfortable in? And then also have you played other roles where, where could you play on the pitch? Um, yeah, I definitely see myself as an out and out striker. Uh, in the past managers have tried me different positions on the wing, uh, but I'm most comfortable and want to play as the striker. So up top. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, trying to let people know more about you uh let's reach back a little bit um this could be your professional career you could be as a youth it could have been the you know as a four-year-old i don't care but what was your most memorable soccer moment what is that moment that just stands out to you and says man this is the one that i'm going to think back and talk about you know maybe my kids with at some point um it actually doesn't have anything to do with my own career i think it was seeing my older brother um play for Newcastle United in front of 52,000 fans for the first time I think that was and still is a moment that uh, I replay over and over in my head and I kind of use it as sort of like a confidence boost encouragement uh, throughout my career so yeah just seeing how his career has progressed over the years has always been something that's just kept me focused kept me going. So you mentioned your brother in Newcastle. Obviously, people can hear in your voice that you're not American. Mm-hmm. Um, so why don't you uh, let us know, though I, a lot of people have probably already figured it out by now, but let us know where you're from and maybe uh, the path that took, you, know, you took to get to at least the U.S. and maybe ultimately NASL and then to FC Cincinnati. Um, well, from Newcastle, England, my family are originally from Nigeria. So my parents, my older siblings were born there. Me and my younger brother were born in Newcastle um, and grew up there, started playing soccer or football, as we call it, when I was 13. So it was quite late on compared to some of the other guys that I played with um, and kind of got fast tracked. Uh, into the Newcastle United Academy. I spent six months there, moved on to Leeds uh, for three years, got around England a bit, and then in 2011, that's when I first moved abroad. I moved over and played in Iceland for two years, which was an amazing experience. Got to uh, obviously experience different culture, um, different way of life, meet new people, uh, obviously, the football and culture is completely different as well. So that was a real eye opener for me because until then, even though I had moved away from home whilst I was in the UK, I was still in a comfort zone. Everything was just the same to me. Um, and so that was a real character builder for me. Uh, so I spent two years there. And then after that, those two years, I moved on to Finland for a year and It's weird how I actually, I ended up getting out here. I played with an American uh, in Finland called Carson Smith, and he'd obviously played in the NASL for San Antonio Scorpions back in the day. And he was just saying, oh, it's an up and coming league. Um, You should try and get yourself out there. There's a chance. I was like, oh, it'd be awesome to try something different because obviously playing in the UK, then playing uh, in Scandinavia, I was like, okay, three years, let's try something different and randomly uh, that off season I got a call from my agent saying there's a team in North America that they want you to come in they want to take a look at you um, Edmonton and I was like I've never heard of that place in my life I had no idea where it was Uh, and I was like what the heck let's give this a chance and went over there from day one as soon as I landed there was something about not just Edmonton or Canada, but just North America that I was like, okay, this kind of feels like home. Uh, it was just a really weird sensation. And yeah, I had four uh, seasons at Edmonton. Uh, there were ups and downs, but I wouldn't trade that experience for anything. Um, and then obviously everything that happened with the NASL and Edmonton shutting its doors to prepare for the Canadian Premier League. Uh, 
this was an opportunity that came up um, a few weeks ago and it's one that uh, probably I'm out of all the opportunities I'm most grateful for just because of the position that I find a lot of my colleagues and a lot of the guys I played in the league with the positions they're in, um, some very quality players not being able to find teams. Um, so I'm very humbled uh, that this opportunity I get to have um, at Cincinnati. Yeah, we we recently just did a piece on, on the NASL, and yeah. it's tragic. Obviously, there's a lot of uh, great players who, you know, just haven't suddenly don't have a home, basically. Yeah. So, so, yeah, we wish them all the best. Um, besides soccer, though, mm -hmm. uh, what what gives you passion? What when you leave the pitch, what is it that you like to do besides soccer? <laughs> um, <laughs> well, before I grew up, uh, I was a bit of a gamer, a bit of a nerd. Um, but now, married, so there's a couple of restraints i can't spend as much time just willy-nilly uh no but I, I like to spend i like to read a lot um whether it's like literature fantasy books uh the minute it's a lot of school work um so that usually takes up quite a lot of my free time but it keeps me busy keeps me engaged um i like to spend a lot of time outdoors with my wife as well we like to get out and do stuff so hopefully when she gets down here we'll have some exploring to do around Cincinnati. Okay. You mentioned schoolwork. Are you going to school or? Yeah, I've been studying for the past, uh, since I arrived in North America. So like for the past three years, uh, I think I'm in my fourth year right now. Uh, I've been doing my law degree, so okay. challenging. But yeah. again, I've learned so many lessons from it, such as timekeeping, responsibility, accountability. Um, so it's been awesome. A lawyer that that was not what I would have expected, but that sound that's great. Um, obviously, we know some lawyers, so we can uh, we can you know give you some recommendations on people to talk to. Uh, let's see what else we want to talk about. Ah, well, this is always a fun one. So usually, I ask the American players who they follow abroad, but seeing as you're an international player, may I'll just say you know who is your your team? I'm I'm thinking maybe Newcastle. You know. Oh wait! Not. Okay. <laughs> I'm, Sorry, prob I'm probably going to get a bit of stick from this yeah. from family, uh, but Liverpool. Liverpool. Yeah, I've always had a soft spot for them. I think it might have been because my older brother supported them a lot when he was younger as well, and just kind of passed it on. Uh, yeah. All right, we got a lot of uh, Arsenal fans on the team, but there's a few Liverpool as well. I think uh, I think we had like three of them. Yeah. So, and there is a, a chapter that reached out to them. So we'll have to get your name added to that list so you yes. can uh, you can join in with the uh, festivities. <laughs> you, you know, you've been with the team now for, as you said, a few weeks. Uh, you're, you're actually the last one to join, so you have the least experience with everybody. But but hopefully by now at least a few people have made an impression on you of some kind, whether it's on the pitch or off the pitch, but is there anybody who's, who's just sort of stood out to you as somebody of great character, maybe helped you with the transition or maybe just impressed you or whatever, but, but who, who on the team has uh, jumped out at you at this point? Do you know, it's been really hard. Uh, that's a really hard question because literally everyone has been awesome from day one. Um, from the time, obviously I was meant to come in a bit earlier, but for visa issues, I couldn't, but, um, from the time I walk through the doors, everyone has just kind of been there to help me settle in and just been an awesome experience. And I think that speaks to the character of um, each and every one of the players that, that's here. Um, Alan just hasn't brought in uh, quality players. He's brought in just great men. And I think that's one thing that will hold us in good stead for this season, um, no matter what challenges we face. Okay, um, so let's maybe take a different approach to it, okay. but um, leadership. leadership. So let's talk about leadership. Obviously, somebody wears the captain's armband, yeah. um, and that's almost a formality, to be honest, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. The question really is, is who on the team steps up and, and really demonstrates leadership, uh, either through the way they act, uh, the things they say, maybe their, their experience? Who, who so far has, has impressed you as natural leaders on this team? Um. There's definitely quite a few out there. Um, one of the guys, I'd say, definitely Richie Ryan. Um, just through his football alone, uh, you see the way that he commands the respect of 
his peers and the people he plays against just by the quality he delivers on a consistent basis and obviously having played against him quite a few times um, it's just awesome to see that he's able to um, carry a team uh, obviously not just by himself with the help of others but just how he he carries himself around the pitch uh, it's, it's really awesome Perfect. And then obviously we, we know, you know, we've been to training and we've watched the training. You guys are all working extremely hard. You know, the goal is to be very successful on the pitch. Yeah. Um, but sometimes you have to have a little fun, too. So who, who on the team has struck you as maybe the, the person who brings that moment of levity at times, maybe when it's needed, maybe when it's not needed? But, but who are the jokers on the team? Um, again, there's quite a few. Uh, I'd say Manu. Is definitely one who likes to have uh, a bit of fun every day in training. You can always go to him to if you're feeling a bit down in the dumps and he'll crack a joke or he'll say something that will bring a bit of a smile to your face. Um, still trying to find my way around some of the other guys, but there's definitely some jokers out there. Okay. Um, let's talk a little bit about Cincinnati then. Um, have you ever been to Cincinnati before you joined this team? First time. Okay, that's fine. Um, maybe, you know, coming from Europe, uh, going to Canada, uh, finding out that you're going to join this, this club here in this strange place called Cincinnati, you might have had some preconceived notions or some thoughts about what Cincinnati might have been. Hopefully it wasn't like Buffalo or Wild <laughs> Horses or anything like that. But, but whatever your thoughts, um, was there anything that just surprised you when you got here and you, and you actually got to get around the city a little bit and you went, oh, this isn't what I expected at all? Uh, just how overly friendly everyone is uh, it's really taken me back just my whole experience with North America and definitely Cincinnati as well um, from day one uh, whether it be Uber drivers or uh, people working in supermarkets or just people I bump into in the street uh, just kind of opening their hearts and just offering like advice things to do around the city places to go and eat i think literally nearly everyone's recommended the chili here which i haven't tried yet but yeah just i think the the friendliness just people with open hearts open homes it's just made this transition just so much easier so I usually ask about Skyline Chili. So you've answered that question as far as you haven't tried it yet, which, which is understandable. When you came into the team, obviously, this is not a good time to eat Skyline Chili. No. So you're, you're, it's oh, okay. not training food. It's uh, definitely so not I training food. Until after the season. Yeah, or at least like at a, at a break or a gap or oh, something. Okay. You know, it, it's cheat food, right? Oh, okay. It's on a cheat day. You might you might think about it. But um, let's let's get one more question in, which is you mentioned uh, people made a lot of recommendations on places to eat, places to go. Have you found any restaurants, any little shops, any little you know corner places that you just think this is really awesome this is a, a place i've really enjoyed not yet i haven't been out all that much i'm waiting until my wife gets down uh, so we can go out and explore together um so we're looking forward to it apparently there's some nice little places around where we live uh, we've been told about and then also downtown in different areas so we're looking forward to getting out and exploring but that's nice that you're gonna save that for her so right. she can experience it with you. So, <laughs> so we'll, we'll we'll forgive that. But but obviously a lot of great places here in Cincinnati. I hope you uh, get a chance to explore them. So thanks for talking with me. Thank you very much. Thanks, Adam. All right.